I am uh, Linnaeus. This is my reading copy. That's how I know I'm <laughs> But if I leave it there, my cover designer will kill me. <laughs> this is Great Bones. It is my brand new book. Uh, it is a romantic comedy. The grandmothers steal the show. Uh, the story, the main character in the story, not really, but her name is Rachel. She writes romantic greeting cards for a living, but this woman cannot get a date to go write in a Subaru full of lesbians. <laughs> so that tells you pretty much all you need to know going into this scene. Rachel is visiting her grandma Goldie, who is in an assisted living facility. She's checked herself into the assisted living facility to get away from her <laughs> overbearing daughter. And so she is feigning deafness <laughs> and memory loss, neither <laughs> of which is true. <laughs> so uh, this is from Great Bones, which is on sale on June, where Carol Merrill is not sitting. <laughs> she took me to an Indian restaurant, Grandma. An Indian restaurant! Rachel made a face like she just tasted a mouthful of gefilte fish. She never even asked me whether I liked Indian food. It was the worst meal I've ever eaten. Goldie wanted to lighten the mood. She wanted to see her beautiful Rachel smile again, not to mention that the decibel at which her granddaughter was screaming the story was making her ears practically bleed. I bet it wasn't worse than that time you ate that tube of Nivea cream, <laughs> or that time your mother accidentally made the turkey gravy with baby powder instead of flour. <laughs> Grandma, I'm being serious here. This was the worst date in the history of worst dates. That's good. I will never, ever use a dating service again. Okay, good enough already. We'll cross that evil girl, whatever her name is, off the list. She's not good enough for you anyway. <laughs> Rachel put her head on Goldie's shoulder. I should just give up, Grandma. I try and I try, but I just don't think the right woman is out there for me. Goldie wrapped her arms around Rachel and rocked her. Nonsense. The right girl's out there. You just haven't found her yet. I don't think I ever will. Hush, of course you will. Any girl with half a brain would be lucky to have you. I love you, Grandma, but I'm just a disaster waiting to happen on dates. I gotta go, I'll be late, and you know how Mother is. Oi, do I know how your mother is? Goldie pulled back and kissed Rachel on the cheek. Will I see you next week? Have I ever missed a Friday? Not so far. I'll see you next week, Grandma. I love you. I love you too, Bobola. Rachel paused at the door to Goldie's tiny bedroom and waved before disappearing out of sight. Goldie sat on the edge of the bed, waiting for the sound of the apartment door closing. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. When she'd counted to 10, she rose, shuffled over to the door leading to the hallway and peeked around the corner. Not a soul in sight, not even that eagle-eyed pain in the tush oven. Good. In truth, Goldie admitted he was a nice young man, good looking too. He had good teeth, full head of black hair, muscles, and a sincere smile. But his timing was always problematic for her esca escapades. Room 1492, the year Columbus discovered America. Goldie consulted the oversized facility map on the back of her door. Of course, Ida's room would have to be clear on the other side of the building. Well, no distance was too far for when the happiness of her granddaughter was at stake. I said, what? No, I don't want to see your cummerbund from your high school prom. Goldie shook her head and continued down the hall, old, old men. She was glad her Morris, God rest his soul, hadn't outlived his mind. <laughs> Aha, after what seemed like miles, Goldie finally found Ida's place. She knocked on the door. Come, Ida, are you decent? Goldola depends on your definition. Come on in. <laughs> Goldie stepped inside and glanced around. Ida's place was identical to hers. She passed through the tiny kitchenette and into the living room. Ida's sofa was against the wall under the bank of windows just like hers. Ida even had a red velvet lift chair in the space where Goldie's recliner sat. That's where Ida was sitting. The place smelled of chocolate and air fresheners. So, are you settling in? Eh, I'm doing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Goldie nodded. She remained standing in the center of the living room. It's not the old neighborhood, that's for sure. And the food, oi, don't get me started. Mm -hmm. Still, I wake up on the right side of the dirt. Life is good. Speaking of which, did you know they make a t-shirt that says that now? Life is good. Can you imagine? <laughs> I hear it's a multi-million dollar business. Goldola, if we'd known all we needed to do was put three words on a piece of cotton, we'd have hit it rich. <laughs> Goldie watched for her opening. Surely Ida would run out of air and, give her, and have to take a breath soon so she could get a word in edgewise. Anyway, I'm sure that's not why you're here. Ida pointed to the sofa. Come, sit, tell me what brings you to my neck of the woods. Finally, are you still a Yenta? 
Goldie sat at the end of the sofa nearest her friend. Goldie Horowitz, you should be ashamed of yourself. I, my dear, am a shaghan. Why do you suppose those nebbishes who wrote Fiddler on the Roof got such an important detail wrong? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows a yent is a busybody, a shaghan. Ida puffed out her chest. A shaghan is a matchmaker. So Ida, are you still in the business? Me? Nah, you kidding? Nowadays these kids go on the radio. The computer, you mean they go on the computer? Yeah, yeah, that box thing that sits like a paperweight on their desks. Ida stared off into space. You were saying? Goldie prompted. What? Oh, yeah, nowadays these youngsters, they find their own dates. They do a lousy job of it, too. Have you seen the Jerry Springer show? <laughs> Only the number of divorces. And our day you got married, you stayed married. Ida, anyway, the damned radio computer put us out of business. That's a shame. Why are you asking? It's my granddaughter, the lesbian. Your granddaughter's an actress? <laughs> no, not a thespian, a lesbian! Your granddaughter's a lesbian? Shh, who are you telling? Boy, Goldie slapped her palm to her forehead. It's not the way it used to be. You should try to keep up with current events. You know that? Anyway, she's got terrible girl troubles, and I'm determined to see her happy and settled before I kick the bucket. But she's already told me she'd never resort to a computer dating service again. Thinks they're a waste of time. She had a bad experience. <clears throat> Ida tapped her finger against her temple. I don't know, Goldula. Girls looking for love matches with other girls. Goldie's back stood up. Love is love, Ida. There's nothing wrong with my Rachel. She just happens to prefer other women to men. Truth be told, she's probably the smartest of the bunch. <laughs> Ida held up a hand defensively. Slow down. No one's casting aspersions here. I just meant I don't have any experience. Goldie waited patiently. She'd seen that expression on her friend's face many times. She was sorting through the challenge. Finally, Ida's eyes lit up. You know, I did train my granddaughter in the old ways. She's young, she's hip, I'm sure she's dealt with this sort of thing before. She runs some fancy schmancy dot com matchmaking service. Why they named it after some woman named Dorothy, I have no idea. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> like on the computer, there was no Dorothy. <laughs> Whatever, Goldola. The point is, she still knows how to do things old school. I could talk to her about it. We have to be sneaky about it. My granddaughter wouldn't like us unterstupping. <laughs> Discreet is my granddaughter's middle name. Your Rachel will never know we had anything to do with it. Your granddaughter could never let on. She was doing something to find uh, my granddaughter a date without letting her know. That wouldn't be a problem. My Julia, she's very, very clever. I can pay her. It's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> she's coming to visit on Tuesday. I'll introduce you. That's from Great Poets. <laughs> <laughs> about uh, 15 to 20 minutes for